So hi to everybody. This is Dr. Ollie, and today I'm going to start something new, and we're going to call it the Dr. Ollie's Book Club, because we are now advertising and supporting the mylsp.com, the new marketplace for authors like me, and LSP is selling books for us. And so I thought, well, just instead of selling you books, why don't we show you a little bit first what is in the book? Now, this book has been an absolutely bestseller. It's called The Doctor's Guide to Essential Rewards. And as you know, in the United States, we slightly changed the name of Essential Rewards to Safe, uh, Subscribe to Safe. And so what we did, because three pages in the book are about the old Essential Rewards program, we updated the book. We added an insert that describes the new STS or Subscribe to Safe program instead of the old Essential Rewards. So this is a book with updated info and everything else is still very, very, very hot and you know, very timely, by the way. So, and because we're launching this new website together with mylsp.com, are we gonna offer you 40% on this bestseller book? So what is this book about? So let me just talk to you about a couple of chapters that we have in this book. And the first thing I wanna talk about is baby talk. Yes, we have an entire chapter about babies. Now it's really important, right? And just if you imagine, our babies are now born with almost 300 chemicals in the cord blood. Yes, you heard correctly, 300 chemicals, right? And then the skin of a baby is about 30% thinner compared to adults. So everything you put on the baby's skin will go immediately into the skin and absorb very well and very fast which could be a blessing, but with chemical stuff, it's really bad. It means that the babies are taking off these chemicals from lotions and soaps and all these things very, very quickly. Now, another things we have, we have something called the blood brain barrier that protects our brains from chemicals entering basically from the bloodstream into the brain. But this blood brain barrier is not fully developed until about the six months of a baby. And so chemicals that enter the baby's bloodstream can easily penetrate the brain. And it's even accelerated because most chemicals are fat soluble and they will seek out fatty tissue. And we look at the baby, where is the most fat in a baby? It's in the brain. And that's one of the reasons why early in childhood, in babyhood, basically, chemicals go easily into the brain. Now, it is really shocking to hear that about 82% of all baby products sold contain formaldehyde, for example. 67% contain 1,4-dioxide, another chemical very toxic. And 61% contain both. And both are known carcinogens. They will cause cancer later in life. And we are selling that. We still allow this to be sold to young mothers to use on their babies. And here we look at the study that showed that this, the babies are born with basically 300 toxic chemicals in the cord blood. Out of those exactly 287 toxic chemicals that they found, 180 of them are known to cause cancer, 217 cause brain damage, and 208 cause abnormal development. And we mean here hormonal development. These are hormonal disturbances that will have a huge impact on the child and then the adult's life. So the Environment Banking Group, which is called EWG, found that a huge amount of baby products contain com uh, toxic chemicals. Now look at these numbers. 97% of baby bottle bath products contain toxic chemicals. 95% of baby wipes contain toxic chemicals. 92% of baby shampoos contain you know, toxic chemicals and 91% of baby lotions. I mean, what in the world are we doing? Why do we allow this to happen? We are really poisoning our little babies from day one, you know, the weakest of the population, the babies. Now, interesting, they did a survey with 3,300 parents and they found with that survey that babies are in average exposed to 27 toxic chemicals per day. And you find these chemicals in shampoos, baby lotion, soap, diapers, diaper creams, sunscreens, and many other baby products. And I'm not even talking about the toys that are full of toxins. And these chemicals, as we already discussed, 
they cause cancer, brain damage, allergies, hormonal problems, and then of course development delays because of the hormonal problems. Now, in the US, people like to keep their babies clean, right? So the average baby in the US gets a bath four times a week. The average baby in the US is shampooed with the little bit hair they have three times a week. But that also means with the current product that contain all these toxic chemicals that the average baby is exposed to 66 toxic chemicals a week from bath and shampoo products alone. And then a whopping 78, almost 80% of these babies develop skin rashes because of these chemicals. And these products often on the label have hypoallergenic. So meaning that you, when you buy these products, you think you're doing something good for the baby, but yet they're still getting a lot of baby rashes, skin rashes. So the exposure to toxin in, you know, in the science has shown it's like children and baby products are not safe in general. 82% of children are exposed weekly to dangerous chemicals damaging the brain, almost 70% of chemicals that damage the hormone system. And then, as I said, about 80% of the products marked as gentle and non-irritating cause allergies. I mean, just imagine, right? I mean, we allow these companies just to sell anything they want with any marketing they want. Nobody's really controlling that and holding these companies you know, accountable. Now, a real big problem we have these hormonal problems and other problems cause what we call epigenetic changes. What is that? Well, if you inherit your genes, your chromosomes from your mom and your dad, right? This is how it happens when you then grow up. You have a set of chromosomes from your mother and one from your uh, father, and this is how you develop. And this is how these things express, whether you get blonde hair, black hair, blue eyes, brown eyes, and things like that. Now, epigenetic means you can with certain genes change how they are expressed. For example, some people are born with cancer genes. So they more likely to get a certain type of cancer. You know that maybe from certain type of breast cancers. Well, what you may not have known is that these genes, they have little light, like a light switch that you can turn on and off. And the epi means around you. Epi is the old word for around in old Greek. So epigenetic means whatever happens in your environment, what happens with your lifestyle, with your food, with your you know, physical activity, all of these things can turn on or can turn off these light switches, which then will turn on or turn off these genes. So that way you can turn on a lot of good genes that will make you healthy and turn off the bad genes that make you sick. However, if your lifestyle is bad, then you turn on those bad genes and this is why you get all these diseases. So the medical field of epigenetic is a really hot field right now because we start realizing that it's way more important what the lifestyle is around you than what you're born with in, in, you know, in the sense of genes. Now, the other kind of thing is we found out in science that you can inherit those changes down multiple generations. We know at least four generations. So imagine if you use too many chemicals in your household with your baby products, whatever it is, you can make changes that will be inherited down to your offspring. So maybe two, three, four generations down, they will have more disease because you use too many chemicals today. So that makes you really hopefully start thinking what you can do. And so these changes will cause diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular, metabolic diseases. We now see children that are obese that have diabetes type 2 at the age of 8, 9, 10. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And then imagine that you can inherit that down multiple generations. It's just scary. Now, and as I just said, childhood obesity is a big problem, right? And we know that this obesity, childhood obesity and adult obesity is connected to all these chemicals that we have in the environment and at home, right? Because all of those are fat soluble chemicals. They go into the fat cells, they accumulate there and they cause the fat cells to create even more fat cells. And so we know that this is part of the cause for obesity, including childhood obesity and all the obesity related metabolic diseases such as cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, strokes, but also diabetes um, and other things. Now, not to underestimate is the damage on your hormones. 
right? Because we know that all these so-called fertilizer, pesticides, herbicides, all the chemicals you find in household products, in soaps, in everywhere, they're all estrogenic. We call them xenoestrogens because they are estrogens not created in your body, but outside of your body. And they will disrupt basically the development, the endocrine development of the children. For example, in this study, they showed that uh, boys will have development delays, low testosterone level, cryptochism, which means the um, testicles will not go down into the testicle sac. They have pubertal disruption. They have the puberty much later, and they have reproductive tract problems, which will lead to infertility later on, and small genital size. I mean, who wants that? And so this is why I wrote this book. I got so upset about all these things that we still allow the market just to sell these kind of things. Nobody's really checking, you know, and then they come. And when we sell essential oils, they come and say, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do this. But yet everybody is allowed to sell their poisons, right? And we have poison-free products. And so this made me so mad that I said, okay, look, I need to educate the world. And so here I wrote the book, Basically, that gives you 12 months to clean living. I'm grabbing first the low-hanging fruits, and I'm going chapter to chapter to different topics. And one of these chapters is baby talk. I'm telling you everything that I'm telling you now, I have in the book and more, and I have all the scientific references of the studies. And so you can order that now at a 40% discount at my lsp.com with this updated information, the little insert that we created. So let's continue. Now we even in the time when it comes to babies that they born with plastic and a new term has been created called plasticenta instead of the placenta because microplastic particles were found in most of the placentas that they investigated. It's not just this one study that I'm showing. There's now multiple studies and these particles came from plastics typically used in coatings, paints, adhesive, finger paints, cosmetics, crystal crack uh, products. So where's the baby getting it from most likely? Most likely from the cosmetics and soaps and lotion and all of that that mom is using while she's pregnant. And so when you look at that, this leads now to the new term of plastic babies. I mean, how frightening it is that? Very, very tiny little plastic particles we call nanoplastic particles, were detected first in the mother in the long, hard spleen whenever they had to do biopsies for another reason. And they found these little plastic pieces. But then they started looking at biopsies, fetal biopsies, when they had to do a biopsy for some reason, medical reason, they started looking at that. And they found it in the placenta, they found it in the liver of the little baby, the lungs, the heart, the kidney, in the brain, which heavily suggests or basically proves that there is a maternal lung to fetal tissue nanoparticle translocation. In other words, through the blood from the mother, the plastic particles go into the baby, and especially in the late stage of pregnancy. And when you looked at the babies, we found that it resulted in a 7% reduction of growth in that last critical phase of fetal development. So you're getting babies that have some growth problems, development problems, smaller brains, and all kinds of stuff, all because of these poisons and plastics. It's, isn't that really not scary? I mean, I think it's just like outrageous. So what is microplastic? Well, microplastic was introduced in the 70s. It was used as a filler for, you know, to sell you more stuff and just fill it with plastic instead of the real stuff. Microplastic, it's everywhere. It's the major number one component of the Earth's pollution. The pieces are everywhere in every major waterway, lakes, oceans. They made it in our food chain. They made it in our plants. I mean, I have so much more to tell you about microplastic, but that's not the topic today. But we, when we look at plants and we dissect the plants and look at them under the microscope, we see that they take on through the roots micro and nanoplastic. So when you eat your so-called healthy organic vegetable, they still contain toxic plastic. I mean, it's just amazing. It's just terrible, right? We consume microplastic not just by our personal care and household products, but also by our food and our beverages. It's just terrible. So the definitions are microplastic is less than five millimeter in size, microbeads are less than one millimeter in size, and then the nanoparticles are you know, several hundred times smaller or even thousand times smaller than the beads. 
And so they are added to toothpaste to facilitate like the whitening. So the plastic can rub against your enamel, for example, on your teeth and, you know, take away some spots from smoking or alcohol, whatever you have, red wine. But they also add, be added just to add some bulk as a filler. And we call them mermaid tears, right, in personal care products. So whenever you buy toxic chemical products like that, you already know that probably five or 10% of the tube or the box or the bottle you're buying is just microplastic. Just add it to sell your stuff at a higher price or more stuff. Just it's, it's, it's a scandal, right? And in fact, one study showed that they are present in basically 80%, 78% of body washes, face washes, scrubs, and lotions. I mean, that's how scary it is. You really, really need to start reading in the book um, what this is all doing to your body, and then start looking for healthy alternatives like we sell them at Young Living. And in fact, in the book, after every chapter, I have a table where I basically suggest to you what you should order and how many PV it gives and what the price is and all that. And so this whole book is guided towards buying for about 100 points or $100 here in the US products, which is kind of what we need to also make a business with Young Living for those who do a business, right? So it's, you know, when you sign up new people, they say, oh, Young Living has great products, but so many products, we don't know what to select. Well, give them the book. The book would tell them exactly what to select and why. So microplastic, again, global production has reached 400 million tons a year. Over 40% of that is used as single-use packaging and, you know, therefore hugely contributes to level of plastic waste and plastic pollution. And basically all the microplastic containing products in personal care are rinsed down the water and that's how they get into the waterways. The filters in the water treatment plants are not able to filter that stuff out. So it goes out into the world, into the fields where the farmer plant the plants and that's how they get into the food, right? But it really means all of that stuff ends up in the sewage and therefore in the environment. And it's a huge threat, right? So again, not just all the chemicals we have, but also plastic interacts really essentially with the ecosystem, such as water, soil, soil microbes, plant pollinators like bees, and it just destroying everything. It's a substantial emerging global threat to um, the economy. And I'm writing about that as well in the book, not in the uh, chapter of babies, um, but in another chapter where we talk more a little bit about pollution. And so microplastic is everywhere. This is a study made in Australia where they combined data from 50 studies on the ingestion. Yeah, you heard it right. Eating microplastic by people, right? Because you're eating it, whether you know or not. You're drinking it, whether you know or not. The study found that people in average eat five grams of plastic a week. I mean, isn't that just, I mean... Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable, right? That's the equivalent of eating a credit card each week, right? Because that's about uh, 21 grams a month or 250 grams. It's a quarter kilo a year of plastic you're eating. And here, you know, I wish you a good appetite. This is your monthly plastic consumption for credit cards. Uh, it's just absolutely, it's scary, it's bad. Now, another thing I wanted to tell you, most people don't know that, but when you go and buy tea because you think tea drinking is very healthy, you need to find tea with paper bags or linen bags like we have at Young Living, right? The sleek tea is in a paper bag because when you get this cheap tea in your grocery store, they typically in plastic bags. And when you put the plastic tea bag in hot water, that's what you do to make your tea, that single plastic tea bag will release 11.6 billion with a B of plastic microparticles and 3.1 billion with a B plastic nanoparticles into the tea. That's about 15 billion plastic particles you're going to drink when you drink that tea. So really pay attention to these things. Right. And so this is how plastic degrades over time. And you see first you have, you know, very tiny little film will kind of degrade fast under sunlight, meaning two to five years. But then, you know, it gets smaller. Plastic pieces get smaller. They create fibers, then the beads and then the beads start shrinking. And, you know, way before I mean, it takes about thousand four hundred years for beads to start degrading into nano plastic particles. And we have no study yet that show us how long nanoplastic will be around, probably five, six, 10,000 years. We don't know. 
So this is why we should start thinking about using that much plastic, right? Plastic bottles, approximately 450 years to degrade to very small particles that are still not degraded completely, right? So why do I tell you all about that plastic when it comes to baby? Because we're talking also about baby bottles, right? We saw non-toxic baby bottles are BPA, bisphenol A free baby bottles, because about 10 years ago, there was this huge scandal that we detected that the baby bottles contained this BPA, which was highly, highly, highly toxic. And so today, the FDA banned BPA, bisphenol A in 2012. So about nine years, 10 years ago. And we all as parents thought we were safe. But you know, plastic bottles are made with polypropylene, which is very, very common in plastic wear. And today, very, very important source of microplastic. And when you look at baby bottles, 83% of the baby bottles are made with this polypropylene, right? A small number of manufacturers really cover the majority of the baby bottle market and they all use polypropylene, right? So no, the scare is not over yet. We just found a new scare in your baby bottles. And here are the headlines, right? Baby bottles can shed, shed millions of microplastic bottles to the baby. Plastic bottles shed microplastic when heated. You should you be worried? Yeah, you better be worried because this is a huge problem. And so here we go. We go and look at studies, right? This is a study published 2020. It demonstrated that plastic bottles made of polypropylene, which is 70 to 80% of the plastic bottles, they release microplastic with values as high as 16.2 million particles per liter. An individual infant, right? Each infant exposure was fine to, um, to range between 15,000 and four and a half million plastic pieces per day. I mean, isn't that really scary, right? So infant microplastic exposure is much higher than we ever thought. So what is the recommendation, right? So most baby bottles are made out of this polypropylene. It's recommended to sterilize those bottles for sure, but then rinse them with cold water. So the plastic that is shedded by the sterilization process, you can flush away. Now the downside, it, it's flushing into the sewer and it's flushing into the environment, but at least it's not going straight into the baby, right? Let these plastic bottles cool down. And then just uh, when they dry, you fill them with the baby formula or your breast milk before you give it to the baby. The baby formula or the breast milk should be heated in a glass container. Never ever put a plastic baby bottle in a microwave and heat the, uh, the bottle for the baby that way, right? Do not shake the baby bottle after it's filled with a warm uh, baby food or breast milk because it will release hundreds of thousands of microplastic pieces into the baby food. Never ever microwave a baby bottle and use glass or stainless steel bottles or sippy cups uh, made out of st um, stainless steel or glass. Um, you can protect them. They, there's quite a few good products on the market that when the baby lets it fall on the floor, they don't right away break. I mean, certainly not stainless steel, that's fine. What do you do with these so-called uh, nipple shields when you breastfeed? They're also made out of polypropylene. You didn't know that, right? And they also can shed microplastic when the baby is sucking on your breast when you use those. So sterilize them after use, let them cool down, rinse them again with cold water before using them again in order to minimize this shedding, right? So again, all of these things you can read in the book in different uh, chapters in different ways and shapes, and also give you a lot of these um, uh, scientific references. So if you wanna go read yourself, you can do that. Now let's go back to really healthy product after I just scared you off with all these things. Well, I need to tell you because that's the fact, right? But we have wonderful uh, product lines like baby products line, for example, um, Sealing's baby lotion, we have baby wash and shampoo, we have the baby rash cream, we have baby whites, we have baby oil, we have baby linen spray. So these are great, great product. They are chemical free and they're really, really good for your baby. Now, they're not just good for your baby. You can use them for all kinds of different things. So when I am in the garage and I have to fix something on a car, on a bike, and I have these kind of black fatty hands, or when I walk on the beach and I get some tar on my feet, well, you take the ceiling wipe and maybe a little uh, lemon oil and just uh, wipe your hands that way. Also, never, ever use dryer sheets in your dryer. They That's one of the most toxic things in your household. It's absolute, I mean, that we're still allowed to sell 
and purchase these dryer sheets is just absolutely a scandal also. Read in the book about that. But a little trick, which I also wrote in the book about it, use ceiling swipe. They do almost basically the same thing like these dryer sheets, but they're doing it in a healthy way without releasing any toxins. And we travel, we have nine dogs where my wife and I, we rescue abused dogs, uh, sick dogs, and you know dogs that nobody wants, kind of the misfit uh, crew. So right now we have nine dogs. And when we travel, we cannot travel in an airplane and we can you know, go in normal hotels with these dogs. So we got ourselves a little trailer that you see when, when it's closed, you can drive. So it consumes energy and all that. But when we arrive, we can just open it up. And we always have these seedlings wipe with us because when they come into the, in the, the trailer, they, they have uh, you know dirty paws. They don't always smell very good. And so we always have diffusers going and we use the ceiling swipe. It's just a great use, not just for babies, but also for other things. So here you have the seedlings line, but there's other products we have for babies and for children that are really, really, really good. So this is the chapter 11 in the book and also wrote the mini. The mini is almost sold out. So there's a few more to buy, almost sold out. But then the book with the updated information, 12 months to clean living and chapter 11 is baby talk. Now let's talk about, well, again, so here it is, the updated info. And now you can have it with 40% discount at mylsp.com. And all at the end, I'm going to show you the exact link or how you find the book at LSP now. So again, get the book with the updated info and it will help you to clean up your life within 12 months, including you know the babies. Well, the next chapter I want to look at is another chapter in the book. It's the great outdoors, right? And here you see the picture. I have pictures in the book, color picture with every chapter to show you the products that we're going to discuss. But first, before we discuss problems, we always discuss the issues in the environment, the issues that it causes for the human body. And so let's have a look at the great outdoors. And one of the problems we have, which is one of the great things on earth is sunlight, right? And so we need sunscreen for the sunlight. And so here you see, uh, as you're gonna learn that over 90% of sunscreen are highly toxic. Yeah, it's kind of scary. You just heard it right. About 90% of sunscreens are toxic. Well, there's three different types of sunscreens, right? There are chemical sunscreens, there are physical sunscreens and there are nano enhanced physical sunscreens. What does it mean? A chemical sunscreen will absorb into your skin. And then after about 20, 30 minutes, it will start to work. So when you use regular sunscreens and you go out after five minutes into the sun, they don't work for another half an hour almost. That's why you get a sunburn right away, right? But then they absorb into your skin. And the, in, when they're in the skin, they will absorb UV, UVA and UVB. But they now in your skin and they go into your bloodstream, right? And they go into your body. These are chemicals. These are estrogenic chemicals. They will make damage in your body. Now, the physical sunscreens are those made out of zinc oxide or titanium oxide. Zinc oxide is also the stuff you find in you know, baby diaper creams, for example. You put them on your skin, they immediately work. They just reflect the light. So the light cannot burn your skin. And because they leave some white stripes, people have developed nano formulation so you're not getting those white stripes. Well, let's look at these chemicals first. They're made with toxic organic chemicals, right? These chemicals were grandfathered by the FDA in the 70s. And just now the FDA is working, waking up because they found so many cancers and all that could be prevented by not having these chemicals in products that are sold. And so just the last two years, the FDA has requested from a multiple or multiple companies that sell these kind of products like sunscreens to prove to the FDA that these ingredients that we know are toxic are really safe for the humans. And of course they cannot save that. So this is why you have seen several sunscreen that you were used to for decades, they have disappeared from the shelves in the last two years. Well, one of the most widely used toxic chemicals in sunscreen is called oxybenzone. It's about present in 70% of all the sunscreen. It also had the honor to be called the allergen of the year in 2014. All these chemicals in sunscreens and other places are endocrine disruptors. They disturb your hormone levels. And what is the effect? Here we look at the effects on man. More recently born man, I mean, this is now the 20 year old, the 30 year old compared to like 20 years ago, have lower testosterone levels than earlier born men. Testosterone level have decreased by a whopping 45%. 
That explains why many young couple are not able to reproduce, they inf infertile. I mean, they need to go to infertility clinics and get some special form of fertilization in order to get babies. A lot of that has to do, both men and women have decreased, significantly decreased testosterone levels, which are needed to get babies and have, you know, libido to have sex and all these things. Now, this is a study from Finland, but the same numbers we see in the US, the same numbers we see in Israel and in other places where they have done these studies. And when we look at the semen, the sperm in men, we've seen a 60% decline in the last 40 years. And you still ask me why you're not getting a baby, right? So if you want to get a baby, instead of spending these tens of thousands of dollars in the infertility clinics, why don't you go first to your household and start throwing away all these toxins that you have in your household? That's going to make a huge difference on testosterone level, libido level, and fertility of a young couple. And of course, it's not just the men, it's the women, it's everybody, right? We, we just suffer from all these things that we are consuming in one shape or another. And the other thing, we're killing nature. Look at all these beautiful reefs, all these sunscreen, these chemical filters, they fall down in, into the reefs and they kill the reefs. So in many places now, when you go on some islands on a cruise, for example, into the Caribbean, they will prohibit, they will have a beach police that's gonna look at your sunscreen and they're gonna take away your sunscreen because most of your sunscreen are the wrong ones. Right. So what you need is mineral filter sunscreen. They're made with natural inorganic zinc oxide, titanium oxide. These minerals are regarded, are regarded as stable and safe. They work immediately. They don't go into your blood. They don't go into your body. They also protect against UVE and UVB. And there are, you know, sometimes they leave some white marks. So what? Then you look like uh, you, you, you're going to war into the, you know, the ocean. No, but it's really, it, so what? Then you have a white nose and a few light stripes. That's okay. Right. And if you don't want that, then you could do the nano or the liposomal formulation. But be careful. Uh, as cool as I think it is as a scientist to have nano formulations, we, we don't know. We know that they go into your blood because they're so small. Uh, yeah, you're not getting white stripes from the sunscreen, but you get, you get them into your blood. And we, we know that from studies that five days after use, we find these nanoparticles in the blood and in the urines of humans. So before we know a little bit more, I would think, you know, let's not use those until we really know that they absolutely safe. So the clear winner when it comes to the big outdoors, you know, is mineral based sunscreens like zinc oxide or titanium oxide and say absolutely no to these oxybenzone type chemical filter sunscreen, which is about 70, 80%, uh, almost, in fact, almost 90% of the sunscreen sold. Well, here we have Young Living sunscreen. In fact, we took that picture in one of the Caribbean island when we were there with the cruise, because as I told you, beach police was going around and was confiscating one sunscreen after the other. We were one of the only couples left with a the sunscreen. They looked at this and say, congratulations, you are saving our island and our ocean and our you know, beautiful paradise. And then people were standing in line. We, we emptied a whole sunscreen. Luckily, I took about four or five with me um, that it, we we were out you know, for about 10 days, so we had enough. But it's just, it's good stuff. So, you know, you need to look at. And again, I explained this in the book with scientific references, right? So Young Living Sunscreen made from non-toxic zinc oxide, contains no toxic chemical filters or synthetic fragrances. It protects you from the sun. It's reef safe. It saves marine animals, the turtles, the fish. It comes as an SPF 10, sun protection factor 10 or 50. I would suggest we use to 50 because it's almost, they're almost the same. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of very um, confusing when you look at these sun protection factors, but 50 is probably fine. And then they contain healing, I would say, very supporting healthy care, uh, skin supporting essential oils like helichrysum, lavender, carrot seed. Carrot seed by itself has a sun protection factor uh, of about 10. Ylang ylang, myrrh, frankincense. Yes, all these fantastic oils are included. Again, want to read more about that? Read it in the book. It's all there. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, in fact, the last thing, because I don't want you to be here like for hours and hours listening at the content of the book, but hey, we're still the book club and we want to explain to you what you're going to get when you buy the book, right? So the deadliest animal on earth is the mosquito. 
And you know, yesterday's poisons were DDT and others, and we just sprayed the people like on the beach, the kids were playing in it, the women were laughing. Well, all of these, they got cancers 10, 20, 30 years later. Um, the FDA banned that uh, in the 60s, 70s um, at the latest, because they found out early on that uh, all these people that are exposed get cancers. But today's poisons are DEET and picaridine, another kind of substance that is in the insect sprays. And when you read the label of an insect spray, it will tell you to never put it on your bare skin. But look what we do. I mean, look in these pictures. When do we use them? When we're outside, when it's sunny, right? And then we're in the bathing suit or we're walking with shorts. So we put it on, of course, on our skin. It's not supposed to go out on our skin because it's so toxic, right? And when you look at children, I'm sure many of you have sprayed your children down, right, to keep the mosquitoes away. Well, it gives inflammation of the brain. If it's seizures, numbness around the face, behavioral changes, the kid suddenly becomes aggressive, for example. It's immune suppression, which is very, very bad right now with the pandemic anyway. It causes severe allergies, nasal cancers, even cardiovascular and respiratory toxicity. And we see from studies that this deed induced toxic encephalopathy, which is the inflammation of the brain, it's not just after a kid, for example, by mistake, as an accident, ingests the spray or they spray into their mouth for fun. No, it's after, um, not just after ingestion or repeated application, but just a single application. In fact, 45% of the cases were after a one single brief exposure to these sprays on the skin, they um, created these uh, brain problems. It suggested that the toxicity of deed is high and that these should be avoided in children. And yet everybody's buying these sprays and sprays them on the children. So hopefully you learn something and you can read more about that in the book, A Doctor's Guide to Essential Rewards, 12 Months to Clean Living. Now let's look, it's not just the children. It also occurs in adults. And here are some case reports. And the other problem is the mosquitoes are not dumb, right? So they get resistant. They, they mutate like this um, COVID virus uh, in the pandemic. It keeps on mutating. Well, mosquitoes can adapt to these sprays by mutating. And then the DEET, it's very, very toxic, but doesn't even work on the mosquitoes anymore. So now you're basically spraying yourself full of toxins and the mosquitoes are just laughing at you, right? So what they did, they started testing essential oils, you know, for mosquito repellency or from other things, you know, and I, I know I'm not all that uh, compliant with my words, but you know, I'm, I'm selling a book. I, as a doctor can write in the book what I want. I do, the book doesn't mention the, you know, um, the company I'm telling you, the company did not, you know, kind of um, approve, although they did um, the book just to make sure that I can bring across my message to you, right? And so I'm just showing you some studies and I'm in the US, I'm allowed to do that because many of these essential oils are what we call vitality essential oils. They have permission because they're sold as dietary supplement. We can ingest them. And as soon as something can be ingested as a dietary supplement, we can start making claims. But it needs to be supported, of course, by science. And so I'm showing you that science, right? So they, they checked 38 different essential oils for repellency. They found that clove was the best. But another good one, as expected, was citronella and patchouli. Now, just a little um, thing to citronella. A lot of people think citrus oils are dangerous in the sun. I hope you know that. They photosensitive. They sensitive on your skin. You can get blisters and burns and dark spots when you use citrus oils and you go immediately into the sun. But citronella is not a cold pressed citrus oil. Citronella, like lemongrass, is a grass that is distilled. And you can use citronella on your skin and immediately go in the sun without any problems. So here they looked at another study and they compared, in fact, tea tree, peppermint, citronella with deed and picaridine, those two toxic substances in those insect repellents. And they found that they basically, not just were they the same, citronella was superior, had 100% efficacy, and all three essential oil in this study was better than what was sold in, in the market. Now, one of the things we need to ag agree on is that these chemicals, have other chemicals with it that they stay longer on your skin. 
right? And so the, the, the manufacturer always saying, don't use essential oils because they immediately evaporate. That's why they call it essential oils or etheric oils, right? Because they evaporate. However, they found when you added a little vanilla, vaniline to citronella essential oils and others, the repellency time was the same, about three hours. And so what I do when I create my do-it-yourself products against, my, you know, so that the mosquitoes don't like me that much, um, I'm using all kind of oils from clove to lemongrass. I mean, more, more than what I'm showing here. And then I put about one or two um, 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 soup spoon, big spoons of vanilla, organic vanilla extract, and I mix it up and I spray it on my body. But you don't have to do that because Young Living also has insect repellent. And I'm describing this insect repellent in the big chapter, the big outdoors together with the sunscreen. So you can learn much more in the book about these things. And here we have, again, 100% naturally derived plant-based ingredients in these insect repellent, hypoallergenic, deed free no toxic chemicals, no toxic fragrances. And then again, good for the skin, citronella, lemongrass, rosemary, geranium, sperm in thyme, and clove. And now you know why we add a clove to it, right? And this you can put on your skin. It's not like the other spray, which you never should put on your skin. So, and after each chapter in the book, I give you a table with the products I suggest in that chapter. So we, we first always discuss the problem, then we discuss healthy products that we can offer with Young Living. And then I give you the table so you can look up and order those very easily. And you, it always makes 100 points roughly. So you're also eligible for a commission check if you do Young Living as a business. So again, the updated version will tell you all these things. So order now, 40% discount starting basically at the moment when you hear this book club here, this is gonna be posted on the mayalsp.com website. And here you see the website and how do you find the book? This one, but also my CBD and essential oil book. It also has 40% discount. You, you can go to this very complicated address up here, www.mylsp.com uh, dash doctor dash s doctor guide and so on. Um, or you just go into the search window and you put Venker in there, my last name or Dr. Ollie, and you're gonna find the book. Right, and you add it to your bag, and when you check out, you're gonna get the 40% discount. So I hope you learned something. I hope you appreciate that I'm trying to tell you a little bit what's in the book before you buy the book. And if you like that, and we're gonna look at how many people are gonna look at this little lecture here. And if we see a lot of people do that, I'm gonna add more and more chapters into a form of a lecture like that. And we're gonna upload it to the life science publishing website so you can educate yourself and then hopefully buy the book. And whenever we do that, hopefully we're gonna be able to get you some discounts. With that said, I would like to thank you so much. I think this is it. And so thank you so much for listening and go to mylsp.com, look for Venker or Dr. Ollie and get your book now at 40% discount. Thank you so much, stay healthy and stay well. Bye-bye.